Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Algebra 2, Chapter 3, Section 2 in this book. And we're talking about linear systems. Two lines, where they cross, the solution is, uh, the answer is considered that point that they, they cross out, the ordered pair. Now, the, we're going to, I taught all of this in Algebra 1, slower. So if this is too fast for you, go watch those videos. And there are a lot of ways to solve it. We learned last time about solving it by graphing it. And I told you how to do it on your, on your TI-84 graphing calculator that you need to have for this class. If you don't have one, get one. They're so important. It's, the, it's like trying to do it without a pencil. This is an important tool that they allow you to use. You, yes, you can do math 1987 style the way I did, but they won't give you enough time. You've got to have that calculator so you can go faster or else you're going to fail algebra, college algebra. I'm just going to put it out there. They expect you to use those calculators and to be able to use them fast. All right, so our, we're going to learn two more ways of solving the equations, and the next one is called substitution. And what you do is you write your two equations next to each other, and we have a beauty contest. And so we have four contestants. Th this X that's with the three, this Y that's with the four, this X, and you can already tell who I'm crowning, and this Y that's with the two. Now, you can pick any of them and get the right answer, but I'm lazy. So I want to pick the one that looks the easiest to get by itself and the clear winner is this x because it already doesn't have a coefficient. So once I figure out which one, and if you're doing the work for me, I want you to draw a little crown on top of it so that I know which one of the four variables you pick to be the winner. It doesn't have to be a y or an x. Any, any of those four can win, and that one is the one that won for me. So now I want to get it alone. Ignore all the other stuff that I've written on here. Right now we're just solving for this x. So we do the opposite, and we subtract 2y from both sides, and we get that x equals negative 2y plus 2. Now what we do is you circle it, which I did, and draw a line to the x in the other equation because we're going to substitute it in for that x. So see, look, I wrote it and where that x was in red to help you out, I wrote what x equals. By doing that, I got rid of the x and now I only have one variable, y, and I can solve for one variable. I can't solve for two got to solve for 1. So now I use the distributive property. 3 times negative 2y is negative 6y. 3 times 2 is 6. Now what do I do? I sing. I dance. Gathering up your terms. I need to gather up my y's. So I circle my y's and I gather them together. Negative 6y plus 4y is negative 2y. I bring down what I didn't mess with. Now I can finally ask my question. Why is y not alone? Because it's got a 6 and a 2, I work from the outside, so I do minus 6 to both sides. Those cancel out. Negative 4y minus 6y is negative 10. Bring down what I didn't mess with. Y is y not alone. It's, it's being multiplied by a negative 2. So I divide both sides by negative 2. Those cancel out, and I get y equals 5. Whoo! Are we to the answer yet? No. Now we circle this 5, and we draw a line back to the first equation and circle the y. And what are we going to do? Substitute 5 in for that y. And I did it right down here. x plus 2 times 5, see there's the 5 equals 2, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 10 from both sides, x equals negative 8. Sorry, I have to ask water. <laughs> this is my... Tenth video to make today, or eleventh, eleventh I think. All right. So now that I have the answer, this is my x, this is my y. Be sure to put them in the right alphabetical order, and that is the answer. Now your book has that you can substitute these back in and check. I have a problem with that because I'm dyslexic, and if I made a mistake, it's because I flipped something. <laughs> I'll rewrite a 25 as a 52. I'll turn a 6 upside down and it becomes a 9. <laughs> you know. So if, I, if I'm flipping, I will do it twice. And when I check it, I will, it'll, I'll get it saying it's right when it's wrong. So I want you to know how to do it. told you the last time to do this and check it with your calculator. 
Or if you want to do it in 1987 and plug it back in and you're not dyslexic and, and that works for you, do it. I'm checking with the calculator because my calculator is not dyslexic. I'm the only one of the two of us that is. So um, I would encourage you to check with your calculator. Your calculator's right. And so on your college test, your calculator didn't stay up too late playing Mario Kart or, uh, you know, out, out too late at a concert, it's going to get the right answer. All right. The next way is combination. And it's what, what it sounds like you add them together. I only use combination in this situation. If I look at the two equations and there is something equal and opposite or easily made to be equal and opposite, I use combination. Otherwise, it's my least favorite way. I'd rather use my calculator, solve for y, and put it in. Or do substitution. But combination is too much of a big old pain, especially because the last half of combination is substitution. Let me show you what I mean. Here are my two equations. So I see that I have something equal and opposite, plus 2y and minus 2y. So I go ahead and write this equation under that one and do a plus and a bar, just like second grade. And now I add down. Negative 3x plus 5x is 2x, and 2y plus negative 2y is 0, but I don't write it down because I want it to go away. And then negative 6 plus 18 is 12. Now I'm going to solve for x. This is 2x equals 12. I know there's a gap, but just pretend like they're squished. And y is x alone is being multiplied by 2, so I divide both sides by 2, and x equals 6. Once I get what x is, I could write it there, but I need to circle it and put it back into the other, to one of the equations. But I'm going to put it in this one because I have room to write over here. So I put it here and I substitute it in. I first thing, substitute. Okay, 6 times 5 is 30, minus 2y equals 18. I bring down what I didn't mess with. Now I need to get the 30, why, why not alone? It's got a minus 2 and a 30. I need to move the 30 first. So I minus 30 from both sides. Those cancel out. Bring down what I didn't mess with, and 18 minus 30 is uh, negative 12. Now why is why not alone? I got something wrong with my signs here. 36 times 5. 6. Okay, maybe I didn't. Maybe I messed it up the first time. And... I copied the problem wrong. Let me see what their answers are. Doot, doot, combination. Here it is. They got six. I wrote down a different problem they did. All right, so we're going to do it right from here on out. Uh, so that's negative 12, and so this would be negative 2 divided by negative 12 uh, is positive 6. So the answer is 6, 6. Let me go check. I wrote the problem down from over here. I didn't like it yet. It's positive 6, 6. I just uh, dropped a negative there. Um, uh, I didn't like it that they gave you a hard one first that I wouldn't do. All right, so here's the hard one. Here are the two. This is the one like the example in the book. Here are your two equations. 2x minus 4y, 4x minus 5y. So these don't have anything equal and opposite, but it can be made equal and opposite pretty easily. If we multiply by negative 2, that would make this negative 4x, and it would be equal and opposite to 4x. But, and I'm allowed to do it because I could do anything I want in math as long as I do it to both sides of the equal. So I do it to everything. Everything gets multiplied by negative 2. So negative 2 times 2x is 4, negative 4x. Negative 2 times 4y is positive 4y. Negative 2 times 13 is negative 26. I bring this one down and put it underneath it, and I add them up. Those go away. This is 3. That's negative 18. And then I divide both sides by 3, and y equals negative 6. I take it, and I put it back in for to that y and you get 30, and then you subtract 30 from both sides and get negative 22, and then you get x equals negative 22 over 4, and then you reduce it, and it's negative 11 over 2. Another important thing, in Algebra 1, if you got weird answers, it was probably wrong. 
But in Algebra 2, they love weird answers. Just because it's something weird like negative 11 over 2, that's the answer. And notice also it is improper and we do not properify it. We enjoy improper fractions better in Algebra 2. Now, two situations happen and you where you don't really get the right answer, where you don't get an answer. So here I've got some equations here. I've got, and it's this one and this one are the two. And I can make them equal and opposite pretty easy if I multiply this by negative two and now they're equal and opposite and I can add them. The twos go away, the fours go away, and uh, negative six plus seven is one. And all my variables suddenly went away and I got zero equals one. Does zero equal one? No. If I have zero dollars, I'm staying home. But if I have one dollar, I can go to the Dollar Tree and get something. Because I can scrounge up the tax. There's penny somewhere. Okay? So if you get something weird and false, the answer is no solution. It means these are parallel lines and they are never crossing. The other thing that happens is you can suddenly get something that's weird and true. And the answer is infinity solutions, they're the same line. So here are my two equations, this one and this one. I multiplied that one by two so that I had equal and opposite. But if you notice, the x's go away, the y's go away, and the 12's go away, and you end up with zero equals zero. Weird and true, then it is infinitely, infinite number of solutions. And you get to use the sideways eight, the infinity symbol. And that's always fun. Okay, so that was just goal one. The last thing in your book in this chapter is a word problem. And I skip the word problems when you don't really do them, when they're weird and nobody does that. But the next kind of word problem is very important, very common. It's a famous word problem, like the 42 watermelons 